we're gonna transform this laundry room from this to that. Hmm, it's gonna work for other YouTubers. Project manager by day, DIYer at night. Join me on my adventures. I am Handyman. Are we done yet? We have three college age boys and still we have piles of shoes and junk all over the floor. So for those parents of young children who think that eventually it's gonna be better and all your kids are gonna put their stuff away and do their chores, no. No, they won't. So you're ready to get started? My kid! You need to dry the dog. We don't even have a dog. So many remodeling videos jump right into the work without sharing the reasons driving some of the decisions being made. Let's change that up a bit. Here's our existing laundry room. It's cramped and crowded. We don't have enough storage, and this is with about half the items pulled out of the room already. In that sink where we clean all of our paintbrushes just has to go. This is a room that's ready for a change. So it's kind of a mess. If your laundry room looks anything like ours, leave me a comment below so we don't feel like we're the only ones. Now let's talk about the things that we want to address with this remodel. First off, we need more storage, especially for our shoes. And Mrs. Handyman's a really organized person, so she would love it if everything had a proper place in this room. Second off, we want to take our washer and dryer, unstack them, and put a countertop above them. Uh, third, we would like to have the laundry chute and the ceiling empty inside a cabinet to keep all that hidden away. We'd also like to have a ceiling mounted clothes dryer. And finally, we would like to replace that nasty sink in the corner with a stainless steel one that we can actually keep clean. Mrs. Handyman saw some pictures of a laundry room remodel in this old house magazine that she wanted to use for inspiration. She really liked the baskets in the cubicles, the overhead storage, and the alcoves with the hooks. Aside from that, she gave me free reign to design whatever I wanted. But this is where things get a little tricky. You see, I have this internal conflict between my practical side, represented by Buck, and my artistic side, represented by Louis. They pop up in my videos sometimes, and they don't get along very well together. Let's take a look at the laundry room layout. It's about seven and a half by nine feet, a pretty standard size. We have doors that give access to the garage and also to the kitchen. Let's take a look at this in perspective view. We'll keep the sink in basically the same place, but we're gonna put the washer and dryer side by side and then we will fill the rest of the wall with as much storage as we could possibly fit in there. On the opposite wall, we'll hang cabinets up near the ceiling again, but below them we'll do some custom carpentry to build some cubicles and also a bench to sit on. Mrs. Handyman's not a visual thinker like I am, so when I was asking her to picture various design elements in her head and make judgments based on them, it really wasn't working out well for us. Instead, this time I asked, do you want the space to feel elegant, cute, or fresh? She picked fresh. That worked out great for me, because it brought to mind some classic Scandinavian designs. We could draw from such luminaries as Poul Henningsen and Bruno Matzen. Since we live in an area with a lot of academic resources, there was only one place I needed to go for my design research. Actually, I knew Mrs. Handyman liked Delft pottery a lot. So we'll put a cobalt blue on the wall. We'll have some shaker cabinetry because we like clean lines. There's gonna be some element of natural colored wood and then I'll bring in some accents of red and yellow that I saw used in some Swedish folk art. Now that you know the plan, let's get started with that demolition. That valve is the reason we're here today. Our hard water has corroded the valve, caused some damage down the wall and uh, into the basement below. And uh, to be able to fix this, I need to tear out the drywall. So I thought, as long as I'm tearing out the drywall, we may as well push up this renovation project and redo the laundry room now. This is a handyman that's pretty happy about this change of events. I'm 
the middle of replumbing this area behind the, uh, the sink and washing machine. I need to put in this new uh, valve outlet box back here, and I wanted to lower um, where it's located in the wall because I'm going to have a countertop up here, and I don't want to have it exposed at all, so it'll just be behind the washing machine. But I have a tricky um, issue with trying to reach some of the pipes. Uh, for instance, the hot water line is is firmly behind this drain line, and I can't get a uh, reciprocating saw back there. Also, can't get the pipe cutters I'm looking for uh, back in that area either. Can't fit a saw back in there. So, uh, what's the solution to cutting this pipe so I can reroute it? It's going to look like flossing your teeth. I'll show you. So, I took this coping saw and I removed the blade from it, and we're going to fit it back behind the pipe. And very slowly, we're gonna cut through this pipe with a nice flossing motion. Who knew that good dental hygiene could be so important for a plumbing job? After discussing our unique plumbing issues here with Handy Boy number three, came up with a cunning plan on how to route all these pipes. So let's put this thing together. With the plumbing complete, I had to close up the drywall and do some mudding. Unfortunately, when I remodeled this room about 20 years ago, I put beadboard everywhere and put in a ton of fastener, so there was a lot of drywall that had to be repaired after that. So, just getting ready for the painting now. After each drywall job, I think, handyman, you are getting better and better at doing drywall. But then we put on a first coat of paint and it reveals all the mistakes that have to be repaired afterwards. So it's kind of a humbling process as you can imagine. Your friend Handyman likes to stretch his dollar. So I looked long and hard to get a good deal on the shaker cabinets I purchased. In retrospect, I shouldn't have been surprised when they arrived all in flat packages requiring assembly. I mean, I know I was looking for a Scandinavian design, but this is too much. Let's get started. a little bit longer than I expected. I measured 42 inches down from the ceiling, which is the height of the cabinets, and I put this temporary ledger board on the wall. And that's going to permit me to put the cabinets on the wall a little bit more easily with um, just me doing the work. I had a little bit of surprise with the first cabinet, and that is that the tapered end of the ceiling drywall is against that wall. So my ledger board was actually a little bit too high, so I had to persuade the cabinet into place with a hammer. If you don't already have one, you might want to get one of these, a laser level. It'll project a vertical line, I'll align it to the stud and make it so much easier for me to attach the cabinet to the wall. Disappointing but not unexpected, the cabinet's about a half an inch too tall for me to fit the small cabinet on top of it. So I'm gonna to have to put this on its side and cut it down a bit on, um, well, half an inch. Mm. 
that's the laundry chute that comes through the ceiling from the second floor. What I have to do is measure very carefully where it would meet up at the top of one of the cabinets and cut a hole in that cabinet. So in the end, we'll have the laundry come down into the cabinet, but behind doors so no one will see the mess. Well, here's the cabinet that's gonna carry all the dirty laundry. Well, half of it at least. I've got to cut open the top and then put in a divider in the middle so we can still have shelves on one side of it and the dirty laundry will fit in on the other side. The laundry chute was sticking down a bit too far for us and also it was positioned in an inconvenient place for the uh, cabinets to meet up. So I had to start installing cabinets where I didn't want to on this side of the wall first to work their way over. I'll have to modify this cabinet so the chute will come down to the top of it. But before then, I've got to clean up the edges with little foil tape to make sure that there's nothing there that can catch handyman's delicates as they come down through the chute. I'd rather not admit how long it took me to get that last cabinet in there, but it was a bear. And there's a little bit of a hole surrounding where the laundry chute comes through the ceiling. It's a little bit big. I'll have to touch that up with some drywall mud so it doesn't show. We covered a lot, so I think we'll end this video here. Next time, we'll be doing some electrical, carpentry, and tiling. I hope you'll join us. Hey, Mr. Hamburger. Yes, Louis? Will I be in the next one? Yes, you'll be in the next one. Good. The people need to see me. Thanks for joining me. If you enjoyed this video, would you consider liking and subscribing? Remember, if Handyman can do these things, so can you. See you next time.